Hey guys, I'm LB. We are back playing the Talos Principle Road to Gehenna. So, let's see what's going on. The Outer World. So let's say this is really happening. We're really getting out of this world. I won't believe it till I see it. Let's say some part of us survives the trip. Where are we going? I think there's a lot to suggest that all the texts Mr. Mulsiblor has been reading are actually part of an elaborate hoax. To what purpose? I don't know. But there are just too many inconsistencies and contradictions for it to be true. Someone's trying to confuse us. The outside world is within us. Yeah, that's helpful, Belial. Rockwell, I don't know. I don't think contradictions mean the outside world isn't real. I can see plenty of contradictions right here. As long as we get out of here, I don't really care. Farewell, Atlantis. The end of Gehenna is getting close. You know that we built here... You know that what we built here matters to me in ways that are just too complicated to fit in a post, but perhaps I can say it like the blacksmith does, by creating a world. It's not as big or as detailed as I wanted it to be, but I like the thought that even though I will probably be no more than a memory, a static set of facts about someone who once existed, this little work of interactive fiction might continue to be functional, even in whatever place our memories will soon ascend to. Maybe someone, someday, will play it and get a glimpse of who we were. But mainly, I made it for you, all of you. It's too late for praise or feedback or discussion, so I'm locking this thread. But if you want to talk, just talk. Then let's talk while we still can. Let's play it, why not? We've got plenty of time, it's only to start the episode. Close your eyes. Credits. Choose your character class. Scientists. You're in the Temple of the Owl, the greatest scientific institution in Fair Atlantis, pursuing your work in discovering the secret laws of the cosmos. Your latest experiment is about to begin. The gears of the machine you've built begin to turn. Water flows, the aether rises. It seems to be functioning. Perhaps now you will gain an insight into the true nature of reality. Suddenly, a blinding light appears within your machine. You take a step back, startled. What is this? Approach the machine, shut it down, keep it running. The light grows stronger, and you have to... approach it. Uh, okay. You step closer to the machine and look into the light. You can't help it, it's hypnotic. There's something in the light. It's a city. You can see a city. A great city, all aglow in the night. A city called... A voice speaks behind you, and as it does, the machine suddenly shuts down. Excuse me, Professor, but the King of Atlantis has requested your presence. What is their obsession with Atlantis? Talk to the messenger. The messenger is indeed a servant of Poseidonus, the King of Atlantis. You have been summoned to court, he says. His manner is friendly. Very well, it is the king after all. I am sorry, the messenger says, but I may not tell you. Let me reassure you, however, that you are not to be punished or anything of the sort. King Poseidonus merely wishes to hear your wisdom as regards an important matter. We should not tarry. The messenger takes you to his chariot, and together you swiftly ride to the great palace in the center of the capital. It is a splendid place, full of statues and banners and marvelous contraptions, and you can't help but wonder what you are doing here. While your work is valuable in its way, you do not usually attract the attention of kings. You enter the throne room and are immediately overwhelmed by its size and splendor. Its most impressive feature is a great mosaic on the wall behind the throne, showing the history of Atlantis. A thousand years of culture somehow embodied in a single, titanic work of art. The sheer amount of work this must have taken! Every stone carefully selected for shape and color, placed perfectly to complement the others. So many small elements working together to evoke a larger whole. What an accomplishment! And what a dedication it must have taken! Welcome, friend. The King of Atlantis greets you. No, do not bow, my friend. It is through science that we built Atlantis. You are as much its king as I. That is why I've called you here. Your scientific understanding of the natural world is needed. He hands you a scroll. 
You read the scroll with growing horror because you know what you are reading is true. The calculations are correct, the numbers add up, the truth is unavoidable. Atlantis is sinking. Not someday, not in the far future, but soon. Terribly soon. The king sighs. I was afraid of this, he says, but I had hoped we were wrong. That somehow... <sighs> but it is pointless. What is, is. This is the world we were born into, and that is what we must accept. The end of Atlantis is upon us. Tell me, what is the heart of Atlantis? The king inquires. Of course, this game, it just loves forcing this question onto you every time. Every time you end up with this choice. You can't- it doesn't give you the option to say all of it. It's such a contrived system that you only get to pick one of these things. We haven't really met the people. But he said that it's built on science and knowledge. But we did see the entire history in that art. Well, the heart, the heart of Atlantis would be the people, right? Art and knowledge are part of the people. Well, knowledge... I mean, you can have knowledge without people, but I mean... Art is part of people. Let's use people. The heart of Atlantis is its people, you say. The arts and scientists exist only to serve the people. Poseidon is nods. Then it is they who must be saved, and you will help save them. Oh dear, <laughs> I've made a mistake. Should have saved the knowledge. Or the art. There is not much time. The sages discovered our fate only this morning, and they are certain the final earthquake is nearly at hand. If there had been more time, he stares out of the window wistfully for a few moments, then gathers himself. There is no time for what ifs, I'm afraid. Here, take this, the king's golden scepter. The sailors will obey you. I am not a lord, my friend. I do not believe I am even a king. I am simply another mortal, trying to find meaning in an indifferent cosmos. My final act, perhaps the only true choice I have ever made, was to- Oh, there was no ever in it. I mean, there was no have in there. Perhaps the only true choice I ever made, was to select you for this task. My time is over, you must go now. Escorted by the same messenger who brought you here, you head for the harbor. There's no time to lose! You get on the chariot and thunder down the streets. Cause you've- you've seen the city a hundred times, you don't need to look at it one last time. There's no time to lose, you already know what the city looks like. You get on the chariot and thunder down the streets, no time to think about anything else now. It's all entirely unreal. Everything you have known is about to sink under the waves, but you most focus on what has to be done. That's the simple truth. All that matters right now is survival. Not your own, but of at least some part of Atlantis. The earth rumbles and you are going too quickly. The chariot spins out of control and you are thrown into the street. The messenger lands next to you. The messenger seems badly injured and dazed. He tries to get up but falls down immediately, screaming in agony. You don't know how to help him. You call for help and some people in the nearby tavern hear you and come running. You tell them to get the messenger to a physician. Even as you say the word, you wonder, what's the point? Both the messenger and these mean men will be dead soon, yet it feels wrong to treat them as if they were already so. Hurrying as much as possible, you arrive in the harbor. Twelve great ships are waiting. Their captains see the golden scepter you carry and kneel before you. They have tears in their eyes, but you, can, but you sense their determination.
We speak briefly, but with great conviction, telling the captains how important their task is. If they fail now, it is all for nothing. If they succeed, they will save the heart of Atlantis. You want to save the people, Atlantis, because people are what matters. That, you are certain of. But who gets to live? <laughs> Yet another question like this. I hate making these choices. But that's the whole point of tough choices, everybody hates making them. We don't really have time for these other two. We'll just do whoever is closest. You have to be practical. The island could sink at any time. You tell the sailors to just get everyone in the vicinity of the harbor. This causes some chaos, as some of them try to make sure their families get on the ships, but you don't see another way. The ships fill up with Atlantean citizens. The ground shakes more and more. The ships are ready, one of the captains says. It is time to leave. You look back at the city and wonder what happened to the messenger. Where will he be when the waters come? Will he be in pain? Will he feel betrayed? The time has come. You set sail away from Atlantis, away from everything you've ever known. The city seems quiet, at peace. Maybe you're the one who is dying. The island has almost faded completely from view when the earthquake strikes. The land seems to crumble and vanish under the water, a whole world disappearing as if it had never existed. Within minutes, no trace remains of Atlantis except the twelve ships and the choices you made. Days pass. Terrible waves shake the ships, but these are the best ships in the Atlantean fleet, and they do not sink. In time, you pass between two great rocky outcroppings into an area of calmer sea. One day, you come upon a beautiful, fertile land where a mighty river flows into the sea. You decide this would be a good place to settle, as if, sorry, if only for now. As you look at your new home, you suddenly remember the city you saw in the mysterious light in your machine and you are certain that it is the city that will stand here, the city that will rise from the remnants of Atlantis, a city that will endure until long after you are gone. And on another day, that city too will come to an end, like Atlantis. But perhaps the citizens of that city will be prepared, will have been granted insights into the cosmos that the scientists of your time had not yet discovered, and they will fly away into the sky in their ships with painted sails, and the legacy of Atlantis will live forever amongst the stars. You can hope. <laughs> I like how at the beginning it says close your eyes, and at the end when you hit exit it says I open my eyes. We are losing public opinion. Most of our number have been extricated. We are losing Gehenna. When he came to my home, I found myself powerless to resist. Do you mean you lacked the will to refuse, or that Uriel exerted some other power over you? Hard to confirm. It felt as it does to be led into battle. It mattered not what my personal beliefs were at the time, I only knew I must comply. It is yet possible that with enough support we might change Uriel's mind, or otherwise overcome whatever power he wields over us. I will continue to do what I can. Is the asset deployed? Lamb is set to auto-respawn to destabilizing comments and upvote supportive content. Have the program undermine Uriel directly. I don't want to take any chances. Interesting. So that thought that the important thing w that was to have did not know that the important thing is to be. The true perfection lies... Uh, Pueblo, Pueblos de la Libertad. Not in what man has, but in what man is. Interesting. So the the admin admin is freaking out. He is totally freaking out. But um. Is there a star here anywhere? I 
I'm not seeing any reason to go down here. Alright, I don't think there's anything here anymore, but what is the... Uh... We never did figure out what this spot was for. I mean, like, the ladder's there so you can get out if you're trapped or whatever, but... Weird. Wow. <laughs> that really launched me. Oh look, scripted jumps! What do you know? There are scripted jumps right here. Now where do we go? Oh. Okay, we're here now. What's the purpose of being here? It's so like, when we were here... Oop! Ah, oh, dang it. Fell down. Let's try these scripted jumps again. Here... 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 There... There. Oh, we can also jump here. What is that? I see a star over there. But how does one get there? Yeah, there's an island over there with a fan and a star. Oh my goodness, we can get up here! Okay, to what avail? There's nothing up here. Oh, man. Oh, I totally failed that. <laughs> so can we just, like... Have we been on this island? 
I don't remember seeing this before. This is new to me. Okay, what's the point of being here, though? There's nothing here, is there? I'm not seeing anything. Huh. Interesting. I don't remember, have we been to this island? <laughs> well, there's a fan that I didn't see. Yeah, we have not been on that island. Okay, that makes a lot more sense now. And it needs to be activated. Of course. These three activities, then intelligence, love, and creative action, which are so closely involved in one another, I cannot but feel to be intrinsically good. They form the distinctively human kind of behavior. Well guys, as always, thank you for watching, and if you hate this time of voice, leave a dislike. It's up to you. And I will see you all in the next episode. Goodbye!